Hello everybody, welcome to Emmy Animation. Today I, well I was making a map, a adventure map for you guys to play if you want. I won't spoil any of it if you want to play it. But while making the map I learned some pretty cool commands that are used in Minecraft 1.13. If you look in the top left corner there, you can see that I'm in the 18W16A snapshot. Now, there are some later on snapshots, but I'm not able to use those. For some reason, they just crash when I open them. But I'll show you some of the commands that are useful in at least this snapshot, probably in later ones too. So, first off, you can lock blocks. Now, I think this has been around since before 1.13, but I only discovered it while making this map. Now... Uh, you can see that there's concrete on the floor, red concrete and green concrete. Red concrete is blocks that cannot be locked. So anvils can't be locked, and structure blocks, I'm not sure what these do, but they're part of the game. Crafting tables, command blocks, and then ender chests and enchanting tables. Now the ones that can be locked, which I have locked already, it's the beacon, the chest, the shulker box, the hopper, the trapped chest, which it just says chest so it doesn't ruin the trap if you're making a trap with it. The furnace, the brewing stand, I wasn't expecting that to work. It just doesn't seem like something you would be able to lock, but you can lock the brewing stand and you can lock the dispenser and the dropper. So to do this, you use the slash data command. Now, let's use the slash data get command on a chest. So slash data get block, and then the coordinates. You can see that it has the following data. Um, it shows the coordinates, the items in it, its ID, and the lock. That's what we're going for. So slash data merge block and the coordinates. And then for the NBT, you type in curly brackets lock colon the quotes. And then you can just put the name of the key you want to work on it in between those quotes. So I'll just put key. Now it's locked and you can only unlock it if you have any item that's named key. Now you might have seen an example of this before where they where they use like a tripwire hook because that looks like a key, but you can use any old item that as long as it's named key. So if I right click on this with just my hand, it won't work, but it'll work if I put with a key. Oh no, I locked my key in the chest, darn. Yeah, I'll just break it. Now this is this is just for adventure maps, so you wouldn't be able to break the chest and get the items out of it, but yeah, that's a pretty cool command. Next up, you might have seen this and thought, well, this is a strange setup. What are these observers doing here? Well, this is like a redstone clock with two observers observing each other, doing stuff. Anyways, in this chest, we got here a dispenser and a trident. Now, this command I'm showing you is killing arrows on impact. So the command is slash execute at at e type equals arrow uh, I didn't spell that right. My apologies for I can't spell. Okay. Now <laughs> alright so if entity at e type equals arrow and bt equals in ground one then run kill at e type equals arrow so that'll make it that's in this repeating always active command block so now whenever you shoot an arrow let me just get a bow here It'll, first of all, 
it's executing at the arrow, and it'll only execute if the arrow has the MBT, ta MBT data that it's in the ground. So it'll only execute the command if the arrow is in the ground. And then if it is in the ground, it'll run the command kill at E type equals arrow. So let's see here. Yeah, you see it disappeared as soon as it hit the ground. And it works with walls too. I know it's confusing, but it, even even though it says on ground in ground, it also applies to walls. Let's see, so and you can also do this with tridents because they have similar MBT data to arrows. So you just change every word that says arrow to trident, and then it'll work the same. Now, if I put a dispenser here, I have it filled with arrows. You can observe them disappearing as soon as they hit the ground. So that's pretty cool. That was kind of redundant, though, if I'm being serious with you. Now, the next one is pretty interesting. It, I've only discovered this while making the map, and it's different water levels. So... This is water level 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. 0 is just a source block of water. And basically all you need to do is type level equals 0. And you can do this with lava too. And you can use this to kind of give the illusion of smoothly rising water, which I was doing in this map. So that's pretty cool. And it's really simple, too. And then since this is a source block, it won't disappear. So this is all you need to know. Set block water in, in square brackets, level equals zero. This also works with, like, things that you want to be facing a certain direction. So, like, set block birch button. And then in square brackets, you can have facing equals north or something and and that's of course not neither of those blocks but you get the picture and next up we have summon armor stand show arms one so this is a video i promised you a while ago it's the pose how to pose an armor stand so let's it's kind of hard for me actually to remember this but you can get the pose of it easily by data get entity at e type equals armor stand limit equals one. Uh, now this is a different armor stand I have in the level because it's not the right one. But um, let's see where is it? Where's pose? There it is. Pose right arm 0.0f 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 and light left arm is the same so both his arms are down to the side so uh let's see let's name this guy so we'll be able to edit him let's just name him test Okay, now let's go over here. Now we've named him. Everyone's have to try a bunch of times because it doesn't show you its name. Okay, so now we've renamed it to test. So slash data merge entity at e name equals test. Uh, limit equals one. Even though there's only one entity in this world that's named test. But whatever. So then we put, um, in the curly brackets, we put pose, colon, and then another set of curly brackets, and then we'll put right arm, arm, not arms, and then in square brackets, and then you can put 0f, uh, comma, 0f, comma, 0f. And then there, his arm is down to the side. And then, I don't exactly know how it fully works, but you can just mess around with it and, until you get the pose you want. So, um, so for the first 
one, the greater the number is the further back the arm will be, it looks like. And then if we set it to negative, his arm will be out like that. Now let's try for his right leg. There, and it does mostly the same with the legs. And I think it works for the head too. Let's try that. Head. Yep, there you go. It looks a little weird, but... Um, yeah. I'll just put on a helmet. Actually, I'll put on a turtle shell. Because that's cooler than a helmet now that the aquatic update's here. So, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. That's how it works. The pose stuff. Now we got some interesting stuff. I kind of designed this myself, I guess. Um, it's I call it the arrow of teleportation. Now we'll need a test subject for this. Let's just set up a containment chamber. There's our test subject. Now, the way this works is I have this command running. It's actually a pretty long command. So it's slash execute at Eddie, and then it only works at entities that have the effect of blindness. And that's what my arrow is actually. It's just, you know, disguised to look like something else and renamed. And then so execute Eddie, nbt equals active effects, 15, which is the ID for blindness. And then when it finds that type of entity, it'll run TP at E, or TP at P, and then colon, colon, colon. Or tilde, I mean. Three tildes. And that's like on him. So I guess it's shorter than I thought it was, but whatever. <laughs> um, now we'll shoot this arrow of teleportation at him. As you can see, it is actually blindness. Um, yeah, and the way I got to have a custom, you know, that blue text there, I'm not sure. I use this website called Minecraft Tools, and it, like, you put what you want the command to do, and then it'll put a command that you can copy and paste into your world so that it'll work. Now I'll shoot this arrow at him, and as you can see, we've just teleported to him. Hello, sir. I'll let you go now. You're free, go! Go! And this wouldn't be very practical though if you were like battling a mob. You know, you'd shoot him with an arrow and you instantly get teleported to him. But, whatever. <laughs> it's for fun. I'll just keep you in there for the rest of the video. Mr. Test Subject. Now we've got these really cool things in my opinion. Slow falling, jump boost, and deadly water. So the way this works, when you stand on top of a slime block, it gives you jump boost. Um, that's the wrong one. When you stand on top of snow, it gives you slow falling, and when you go in water, it kills you. Um, and because for you know modifying purposes of this world, I have it set that. For water to kill you, you have to be in adventure mode, so that, like, I, if I'm in creative, I can go in the water and it won't kill me. But we'll get to more detail in that later. As you can see, when I jump on this slime block, I instantly get jump boost, it, and it only lasts for one second, so when I go off, it goes away. Sometimes when I hit the ground, I still have a little left, so I'm able to jump again with it, but that's only if there's, like, a ledge up higher in the block, but, yeah. And then, when I stand on this, this is actually a new effect for 1.13, it's slow falling. And I can just slowly fall, pretty much. Uh, so that, the way that works, so slash execute at P, if the block under him is a slime block, so it'll only execute this command if the block under you is a slime block. And if there is a slime block under you, it'll run effect give at P jump boost. So basically how that works is whenever you stand on a slime block, you get jump boost. So, and then the same thing works for this. Just replace slime block to snow, and then 
effect give FP slow falling instead of jump boost. And then this is also similar. Um, execute at the player if the water they're in, not the one that below them, the one that they're standing in is water. Then kill at P. Um, but I have another if here. And so if the entity at P is in adventure mode, then it'll be able to kill him. So I'll just... So I'll demonstrate this. I'm in creative and it won't kill me. Even in game mode survival, it'll still do nothing. And then game mode spectator, because I guess I have to do all of them now that I'm listing them. And then slash game mode adventure. I'm dead. So that's all the commands for today. Hope you guys enjoyed them. And that's all I got for now. Bye bye. Oh, this chunk isn't loading. My apologies, I have a slow computer. Goodbye.